Carrie Pereno, and it's a pleasure to have you here with us today. I'm our Chief Diversity Officer here at American Express, and I'd like to welcome you here, welcome you in from the cold to join us in today's conversation and to join us as the National Council for Research on Women presents an immodest proposal advancing a new era of social justice. At American Express, we love to honor women. We value women as card members and team members around the globe. And what a better opportunity than here and now to host this event and engage in this topic. Here and now at the start of March, the beginning of Women's History Month here in the United States. And just days before International Women's Day is celebrated in countries around the globe. Now is the perfect time for today's conversation. But the National Council for Research on Women knows that. The Council knows the importance of elevating the issues and evolving the dialogue to affect change. At American Express, we value our relationship with the Council and we are honored to be a part of the conversation today. And now I am honored to introduce the thought leader who helps to keep the conversation alive. She is a beautiful blend of the right intent, high energy, and action. She's the Council's president, Linda Bash. And if you don't know Linda already, you should know that she has led the Council for research on women since 1996. <laughs> Under her leadership, the council has grown into a thriving network of 120 research, advocacy, and policy centers, and a growing corporate council of corporations, and a president circle of college and university leaders. Linda is an anthropologist by training and has conducted field research in Africa, Iran, the United States, and the Caribbean. Some of her areas of expertise are around economic security, transnational corporations, work life, gender and inclusion, inclusion, and her work has been published in many of the prominent, prominent publications and media outlets, including NPR, the Associated Press, and the New York Times. She's held positions as an academic dean and provost in higher education. And she's worked at the United Nations as a social policy specialist and research director for a decade. We're pleased to have her with us today, so please join me in welcoming Linda Bach. Thank you, Carrie, and thank you, everyone, and good afternoon and welcome. We're so pleased to see you here. This is a special program that we hold every year around International Women's Day. Um, Carrie introduced me in my title, but uh, and did mention the number of centers in our network. We do have 120, and we're focused on advancing women and girls at every level of society, nationally and globally. I invite you to visit our website, ncrw.org, to learn more about us. And Carrie, we're so appreciative of your inviting us here today and of American Express. We're very pleased that American Express is a partner in our corporate circle. And Carrie, we're very pleased that you have joined our Corporate Circle Advisory Board. So thank you very much. Carrie's job is very important here at American Express. She's trying to make American Express more inclusive and diverse, both internally and in their external relations, which is hugely important. And we thank all of you for coming downtown today. Many of you have been coming to our programs over the years, and we're pleased to count you in our network. Our agenda today is to strategize together about how to rebuild a social contract based on principles of fairness, inclusion, and social justice. I'm sure many of you share our excitement over a new president and a new administration who are committed to the kind of social change we so want. For the first time in many years, we're feeling a wave of new possibilities. But as excited as we are, we want to make sure that our policymakers and decision makers do not lose sight of how the economic downturn and the remedies and stimulus proposals will affect women and girls. Let's take a look for a minute at the current situation. In 2008, over 28 million people collected food stamps in the United States, up from 26 million in 2006. Foreclosures are also up with an 18% increase last month over those in January of 2008. 
and globally the situation is just as dire. New estimates for 2009 suggest that lower economic growth rates will trap 100 million more people than expected in extreme poverty this year. This is on top of the more than 140 million people pushed into poverty in 2008 because of soaring food and fuel prices. Unemployment is also a huge concern. As of last month, the unemployment rate in the United States was 7.5%. For women, it was a little over 6%. So it might seem that women are faring better than men. But in some sectors, women are facing above average job losses. For example, in the financial services and manufacturing. And as the unemployment rate for men surpasses women's in many sectors, we find that women who frequently hold the secondary, lower paying jobs in their families are increasingly becoming the primary breadwinners. This shift is something that is not being looked at enough. In this landscape, we need research about the different ways women and girls are being affected and about their different realities in order to develop policy solutions. Like many of you, we at the Council are impatient with the status quo, and we've launched numerous initiatives aimed at challenging misconceptions and offering alternative policies. For example, our Big Five initiative, where we focus on economic security, health, immigration, violence, and education. So, where do we go from here in these complex times? And what kind of alliances do we need to build so that women and girls and all those on the margins are able to advance and thrive? These are some of the questions that we, we'll be posing to our dream panel today. And it is a dream panel, and they're all good friends. And I want to welcome them all, uh, Marcia Greenberger, Nancy Cantor, Dina Dublon, and we're going to be joined by Adora Udoji. I'm sorry by Patricia Williams at 4 o'clock. We have a girl, Udoji, here. And <laughs> <laughs> yes, she is here, straight back from Ethiopia, in fact. And we're very pleased to have her. Um, Adora is a longtime friend of the council. She currently hosts WNYC's morning program, The Takeaway, and she has led a distinguished career in broadcast journalism, from Court TV to ABC News to CNN. I also want to thank our our corporate sponsors, our co-sponsoring organizations, they're all listed up here. And special, special thanks to our wonderful staff and interns for all their hard work in putting together all of today's events. And I hope we'll see many of you later this evening at our awards dinner. And now, thank you very much to the panel.